Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews. This is a very exciting video for me because I finally get to try a Topo Athletic shoe. It's the Ultra Fly 4, and I think it's a great comparison to the Ultra brand, mainly because they both have those wide toe boxes and a zero and low drop. So it's quite fun to compare these two, and uh, yeah, let's run with it. Now before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, I didn't have a chance to preview this video and this final synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing as it really helps me make these videos. Here we go. For my first Topo Athletic running shoe, I picked the Ultra Fly 4. It's a moderate stability, moderately cushioned running shoe with a wide toe box and a low drop, which makes it the perfect shoe to compare to the Ultra Provision 7, which too has a moderate level of cushion and a moderate level of stability with a wide toe box. The big difference is the Ultra Provision 7 has a zero millimeter heel to toe drop while we get a five millimeter drop on the Ultra Fly 4. They also both weigh 9.6 ounces, both have 28 millimeters of stack height in the heel and both cost about $140, making them a very similar experience on paper. However, we got a lot to get into here because there are some key differences I do want to point out. Moving on to the uppers, this is where Ultra and Topo really separate themselves from all the other running shoe companies out there. They have the wide natural toe box that let your toes splay out once they hit the ground. This is something I really loved and uh, I will say that Ultra only has zero drop shoes. So if you wanted something other than zero drop in a wide toe box, I think that's where Topo comes in. That's why I'm so excited to be doing this review here today. It gives you a little bit more options if you're a wide toe box fan. Something else I'll note is that Ultra does have three different foot shapes. They have the original, which you see like on the Olympus and the Lone Peak, which is their widest. Standard, here we see on the Provision 7, and then Slim, like we see on the Vanish Carbon and Vanish Tempo. They're more race day oriented shoes. Now Topo, I could be wrong, I think it only has one foot shape, which is just kind of their conventional wide toe box shoe. So if that's wrong, let me know down in the comments. But with that being said, let's compare these two models with regard to fit and feel. Now both shoes fit true size, both had a great lockdown. I was happy with uh, the fit and feel on both, but I will say the Ultra Fly 4 does have a slightly more accommodating experience all the way from the heel to the toe. It's just ever so slightly wider. It's like a millimeter or two. It's nothing massive, but it is noticeable if you put the shoe on each foot. So if you want a little bit more of an accommodating fit, that is something to keep in mind. I would probably go in the Ultra uh, Ultra Fly 4 direction. The other thing to note is too that you do have a more strict or a little bit more rigid heel counter because you have this plastic clip that feeds into the stability story that we'll talk about later uh, towards the base of the heel counter and it's just not as flimsy. We're here on the uh, Provision 7. It's going to be a little bit more minimal um, and easier to move around so that is just something to note. I, I will say both up uppers are very comfortable. I was quite happy with both. I didn't have an issue with both at all but it is going to be a little bit more accommodating in the heel midfoot and forefoot on the Ultra Fly for. Again, not a massive difference, it's just slightly noticeable. I took out the inserts and measured them. It's about a millimeter or two more here with the Topo model. So I think it's just something to keep in mind. As far as the tongues on these shoes go, they are very similar. They both have similar levels of padding. They're both non-gusseted. I wish they would just gusset the tongue. And I think they do a great job of keeping the lace pressure off without being too bulky. Uh, the Provision 6 tongue was a little bit too tall and bulky for my liking. They kind of brought it down. But the tongues feel very similar, similar profiles, similar level of cushioning. The one difference I'll say is the here on the Ultra Fly 4, you have these kind of small blue or teal cables on this colorway that keep the tongue from moving around. It just secures the laces and gives you an extra point to keep it from moving. While here on the Provision 7, you have the midfoot place uh, or cable that or ribbon, whatever you want to call it, that keeps the tongue from moving around. I think it's a little bit more effective here on the Ultra Fly 4 because it's higher up and that's typically where that movement occurs. So not a massive difference non-gusseted, same amount of padding. I think they both work well. Um, the Topo Ultra Fly Forge has a slightly better lockdown system uh, with, re with regards to like integrating to the laces and keeping that tongue from moving around. Moving on to the midsoles, this is what really separates these two models and puts some clear daylight between their experiences. Now let's start with the Ultra Provision 7 as it uses Ego Foam. And in my opinion, Ego Foam I think does a good job of not being too soft and not too firm. Because if it's too soft, it's not quite that stable. And if it's too firm, it's just not fun to wear. So I think Ego does a good job of kind of balancing these two experiences and it provides its stability with something called guide rails, which are essentially walls of foam on the lateral and medial side and keep you going the correct direction. Now, the lateral guide rails are quite small and there's a decent amount of um, lateral support. Most of the support I'd say is on the medial side with this larger guide rail here, but overall it's a very stable shoe and I quite like it, very versatile, not only for running, but a whole host of other activities because of how well it's structured, the lockdown fit and the midsole itself. 
Moving on over to the Ultra Fly 4, which features zip foam in the midsole. And this is my first time trying zip foam as it's my first Topo shoe. So I can only really kind of talk to my experience with zip foam in this particular setup. And my experience was it's a very firm midsole. It's much firmer compared to the Ultra Provision 7, which I think gives you some positives and negatives. The positives are it's a much more stable experience because if the midsole's firmer, it's gonna be inherently more stable. The negatives are if you're on your feet all day, if you just want a softer ride, that's gonna be a detractor as it is, again, a very firm experience. The other thing that gives this shoe stability, other than just it being a wide, you know, stable base, is the, this uh, medial support it has posting. So, on the Ultra shoe, we have guide rails, which are, just, which are just walls of foam. There's no dual density setups. Well, here on the Ultra Fly Four, we have this uh, more, more firm, more dense orange foam, which gives you guidance to the medial side. Now, because you do have a very firm midsole, it's going to be fine. To, it's very supportive to the lateral side as well, especially with this uh, plastic clip towards the back, which does stabilize your heel and is another element of stability. So it is kind of a triple threat here. You have the firm midsole, the plastic heel clip at the back, and then this medial posting, which gives you support to the inside. So it is going to be a much more stable shoe compared to the Provision 7, although it is going to be a much more firm ride. So it really depends on what you're looking for. If you want a posting setup, if you want a slightly firmer, more stable experience, go with the Ultra Fly 4. If you're someone who wants stability through guide rails or just walls of foam on both sides and a slightly softer ride, go with the Ultra Provision 7. Now, that being said, the Ego Foam here isn't, super, isn't something super soft and luxurious. It's just going to be softer than we see here on the Zip Foam set up with the Ultra Fly 4. So I hope that makes sense, but they do feel quite different. They do have different stability mechanisms with guide rails on the Ultra model and uh, medial posting here on the Topo model. So just keep that in mind when you're taking a look at these two shoes. Moving on to the outsole, this is where the Provision 7 wins as it has more rubber coverage and thicker rubber, which I think gives it a better grip, mainly because you have these tiny lugs here which do grip the ground quite well, although they do make some noise. So with that being said, the, the Ultra Fly 4 wasn't bad, it just wasn't as good as the Provision 7 with regard to outsole traction. So with all that being said, I was quite pleased with my first ever Topo shoe, mainly because of how the upper felt on my foot. I love the wide toe box. I love that I do get a little bit of an offset. I'm not just kind of purely confined to wide toe box, zero drop shoes. I can have a wide toe box, five millimeter drop shoes. Just kind of makes it a little bit more versatile just in case I don't always want to use a zero drop shoe. Now that being said, I think I'm also very excited to try other Topo models because this was a very firm experience. And for me, I would probably use this more casually for the gym and other activities, not so much running. If I had to pick between these two shoes for running, I'd probably go with the, the Provision 7 mainly, be just, mainly because I just appreciate a slightly more cushioned experience. Not to say this is a bad thing. I just personally don't need the medial support and it is a rather firm ride. And I do like a little bit more cushion for the pushing for me personally. So it just kind of comes down to your personal preferences, but I will say if I'm wearing it casually, going to the gym and things like that, I do prefer the Ultra Fly 4 just because it makes it a little bit more versatile for me. But then if I'm using it for running, I'd probably use the Ultra Provision 7. So it just comes down to your personal preferences and whatnot, but I'm very excited to see what else Topo has to offer because the upper and the experience here and the fit and feel is just absolutely superb. And I'm a huge fan of the wide toe boxes because it really does allow your toes to kind of splay out once they hit the ground. It just provides a much more natural and comfortable feeling compared to like Nike shoes, which in my opinion, just have that pointed toe box and kind of jam your feet together. So all of that being said, it really kind of comes down to your personal preferences and what you're looking for in a shoe. Ultra is gonna have a slightly more well cushioned experience, has those guide rails, which does give you stability in a different way. While the Topo Athletic Ultra Fly 4 has the medial posting heel clip and firm midsole that does give you um, more medial support than anything else uh, for its setup. So just kind of comes down to what you want out of a wide toe box stability shoe. So let me know down in the comments, what do you think of Topo shoes and what do you think of Ultra shoes and which one would you pick if you had to choose? I'd love to see other brands get into the wide toe box game. I'm a big fan and I'd love to see what you guys think as well. So let me know down in the comments. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.